you feel, bro? What's up, what's up, man? What's good, team? How y'all living? You cycle? Man, you know, just doing my thing, man. Just do something to help save the environment. Save energy, man. You know, just the right thing. Shout out to G-Tech, man. They holding it down for the boys. What's up, fellas? How you? Glad to have y'all with us. <laughs> my, I'm Brandon Parrish. I'm from Arlington, Texas. And uh, I believe that my role on the team is to help 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 a bit with the scoring, with the scoring load, and just be a be an offensive presence and potentially a playmaker and a good, a very good defender for the team. Basketball for me is just, it's always it's always been my first love. But as I grew older, I kind of I've always used it as a platform for me, a platform to express the the passions of my life and things that I love more than anything, which is wildlife and, and the environment. And I mean, basketball has been so big for me because it's given me the opportunity to travel the world, travel abroad, and see places that I, I mean I might have never envisioned seeing four, three, four years ago when I was in high school. And it's just it's just opened up so many doors. And this, I mean, like, but more than anything, it's just that platform and how it's given me the opportunity to express my passions and my dreams. And like I said, and basically helped me be a, a advocate for wildlife as well. And I mean, basketball is it's, it's so much to me, but I mean, more than anything, I just, it's a its a platform and it's, it's always been my first love. I'll probably say first, for me, it first started when I was, uh, to be quite honest, I can't remember a day in my life where I didn't love animals. And I know growing up, I used to, my mom and my grandmother used to always play a Lion King for me. And it, even to this day, it's still my favorite movie. And I think this, that, that love for that movie, just and it, how that movie kind of just taught me so much about life and, kind of remembering the person that you are and kind of how you can how put like putting your past behind you and stuff like that and it all it all just transfer translated into my, my everyday life and then I just had always had a extreme passion for animals and then when I got to when I got to college and started learning about it started studying it just it just enhanced that passion in my junior year of college I actually had a chance to go to South Africa and study abroad and do like rhino conservation and wild, other wildlife conservation. That was actually a very life-changing moment for me for it gave me like an opportunity just to go see my, my hopes and dreams with my own two eyes at a young age. And it was just, and now I know for, know for a fact that I know that my, my purpose in this life is to help save wildlife. Now we're ready. Huh. As the environmentalist and nature lover that I am, I appreciate living on Ambrose Farm because they give us so they give us so much open space that we can go out and you know just explore. And sometimes, you know, you just having having a boring day, go out, and get a bit of fresh air, go see the go see the sky a little bit. You know, just something to step out so you're not not seeing white walls all day. What would you say you miss most from home being here? Immediately, I would say the heat. But uh, I mean, more than anything, I miss my family. I know this is my first time kind of being away from them because my school, uh, university I went to was only 25 miles from my house. So I could go home virtually whenever I really wanted to. So this is my first time actually kind of being away from my family and stuff. And I, I miss them, I miss them a bit, but it's kind of cool. It kind of helps me grow up and move, you know what I mean? Move close to that adult life. You know what I mean? Like just coming out here some days and just, you know what I mean? You're not doing anything else and you're just bored. Just come out here, watch the sunset, get some alone time, you know, think about life. My perfect world, I would be able to have own a zoo in the United States. But if I want to live my best life, I'll probably live in Africa, Australia, somewhere where you can get like a lot more the native species are a bit more diverse. You know, there are a lot, a lot more, a lot more animals. My name is Elvisi Dusha. Uh, I was born in Albania, moved to UK many, many years ago and been living in London ever since. My role on the team right now is a backup point guard, but plans to change that. Uh, but yeah, no, my role on the team is just uh, backup, bring some energy from the bench, bring some defense, help the team however I can really and just make no numbers too. I remember putting in a lot of, I still do, but I remember just the hours I used to put in, the real early morning, Get into school way before school started just to 
maybe shoot for 30 minutes max. But uh, I played every sport when I was in school, so I was saying wanting to be a professional basketball player, I, did, I never really always had that vision. I always, uh, you know, I was very keen in every sport, whether it was a racket sport, a team sport, an individual sport. I just wanted to play sports. And as I grew a bit older, started playing basketball more, enjoyed it more, met people, started hearing people's story, and was really, you know, interested in pursuing the same career as them. And then that's, I think, when I, uh, a couple of years before I left school, that's when I made the decision that I just want to pursue basketball only, and then stop playing all the other sports. So let everyone else have a chance. Just real quick, my name is Dallin Bachinski uh, from Calgary, Alberta, Canada. I'm the starting center on the team. Some of my earliest memories of basketball got to be uh, um, when I was probably six years old or so. I've, basketball's kind of been in my family. Uh, my mom played basketball, my brother plays, my sister played, my dad played a little bit, but he was more of the bricklayer. My mom had the touch. So uh, I've just been playing for a very long time and, and just kind of always remember it. When I think of home, first thing I think of is my wife and, and son. Uh, those two, they, they are my home. For me, home isn't a place, partially just because I've moved around so much and uh, been in so many different countries. Having my family here in Worcester is, is all I can really ask for. Um, they, are, they are my everything and they're the reason I you know, work through trials, any, any physical injuries or you know frustrations I, I have them to support me and be with me and, and having them here in Worcester it's it's phenomenal I can't I can't even explain it. The thing from Canada I miss the most uh, has to be either my my parents my mom my dad or uh, the candy I, I, I'm, I'm, I've got a bit of a sweet tooth uh, and there's a couple of treats that you can only get in Canada and uh, yeah, I miss them. Uh, whenever my parents visit or when they do visit, I'm asking them to bring a few. Get your arm up as well. Once you're here, a couple of times. Uh, the difference between waking up on game day and waking up every other day, uh, one, I don't enjoy waking up any day. I'm not a morning person. Um, but, but game day, there's, there is a different aspect to it of making sure that I you know, eat the right stuff. Instead of just eating cereal, I make sure I get a, a decent meal. That's probably the only main difference of just waking up. means today, what I want you to do today is a number of things. I want you to think about what we're doing, the sessions that we're doing. You're getting to know the exercises now. Um, what I want to see from you guys today is a little bit more concentration when we're doing these stretching exercises. Sportsmen these days are often being told to visualise success. What does that mean to you? 
uh, I mean, personally, it's something that we kind of talk about on uh, every week in our SSC training. And we have, like, have, on Thursdays, we have a little meditation moment where we can just sit there and we actually relax and close our eyes. And our uh, strength and conditioning coach, Mark, he tells us to visualize yourself doing good things in the game. And so, like, when you just do that, you kind of just, it's almost like you help you get in your zone. And when you do that, it has, I think it helps build a lot of confidence. So when you vision yourself playing, you see, you visually, you visualize yourself doing good things, not bad things. Appreciate you, big fella. And we I don't think you'll ever get to the point in anything that you're perfect. Uh, I think that's that's one thing you can strive for is perfection, but um, there, there's no limit to the knowledge that you can gain on any subject. Um, you know, you can you can become an expert in hypothetically 10,000 hours. However, an expert does not know everything. A lot of coaches don't know everything about basketball, and and to to think that a player is able to get to a point where they can't get any better, it's, I don't think it's possible. I think that the, the more you work and the better you get, the closer you can get to perfection. But then to hypothetically get one more point, you have to put in more hours than, to get, uh, than it took to get to where you are. And so it's just kind of that, um, the closer you get to perfection, the harder it gets to get closer. So I don't think you'll ever get there. It's just, you know, always putting effort and, and really striving to get there. Uh, during the game, I, I definitely make sure I pay attention to the score and kind of where it's at. 
more of the, the feel of how it, what direction it's headed. Towards the end of the game, of course, you gotta make sure you know how, what the clock's at, how much you're down, stuff like that. But uh, for the most part, I do like to, to just feel the game a little bit instead of constantly watching the clock and, oh, we're down two or up four or whatnot. Some people would like to, you know, they got to visualize it to feel it, to get that buzz, to get that, you know, that excitement, adrenaline going. Uh, me personally, I, uh, I don't get, I do. I, I definitely have visions of, I, like, I would see something before it happens and, you know, have that feeling of what it would be like to, you know, win a trophy, win a cup, win, a, win the league. Uh, I, I do believe in it, but I feel on the downside that it does put pressure on yourself, you know what I mean? If uh, you're here visualizing, uh, you're only picturing yourself winning, 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 then every time you know you, you don't meet that requirement, you kind of you know, give yourself a little boot down. I'm not saying don't think it, but me personally, I'm a day-by-day uh, -day kind of person, so you know, I take a game as it comes. I'm not thinking 12 games ahead or whatever. Visualizing success with anything, sports, school, I think, uh, you know, basketball tends to be quite a bit of physical, you know, shooting, running, stuff like that. But the, the mental side of it controls all the physical. And so I say, you know, basketball is 97 or 95% physical, but that 5% mental controls the 95. And so if you've, if you've been in a game where you're just so frustrated with everything, you're not gonna play well. If you're in control mentally, you tend to play a little better. Um, and so being able to visualize being in control, being, being ready, making your shots, stuff like that, I think visualization can have a strong effect as long as you take that visualization seriously and you actually believe. Because again, your mind, if you're just doing something to do it and not believing it, you're, you're, you're not giving your all towards it. My aim is to always just be composed regardless whether it's a, you know, a late game situation or whether it's just maintaining the lead. I just like to be composed the whole time. Uh, pressure comes, it's, it's natural, it just depends how you deal with it. Me personally, I just, uh, you know, I try to lead. I try to lead by example, so if my, you know, my teammates can see that I'm very calm, collected, relaxed, and you know, we're making the correct decisions, then hopefully it rubs off on everyone else. I'd do anything to win, everyone knows that about me. I'm, I'm a, I'd like to say I'm a, I'm a winner regardless. I'd, no matter what I do, I'll give 100% in winning. As long as I know I did what I could and the guys did what they could, that's it for me. Just winning's my vision for me, that's it. When I think of success, um, I think of the love that I have for my uh, wife and son and, and actually uh, the birth of my son. That, that was a very special moment of, of what life is actually about, is it, it, showing love and making sure that you are able to share that love. Um, within basketball, success is very different. Um, and within basketball, I'd probably say my image of success is when I played in the Sweet 16 and, uh, um, and, and did decently well. Um, but success this year would be you know, winning the cup, uh, winning maybe trophy as well, and, and really making, a, a, making a, a good effort towards a win league. To put it simply, uh, basketball is a way I can provide for my family. Um, with something that I enjoy. Um, it's extremely lucky to be able to play, I know I'm extremely lucky to be able to play this game, uh, play at the level I'm able to, and, and provide for my family with it. Uh, I know that no matter what, I'll find a way to provide for my family, but I know that there's a lot more joy, uh, that I get a lot more joy from playing basketball than I would from you know doing a nine to five sitting behind a desk. But I, I'm just grateful that I'm able to provide for my family through this game. Basketball for me is everything, truthfully. For me, basketball, I've met most of my closest friends through basketball. I've grown great relationships with people through basketball, and uh, I don't see it as a job. Personally, I do not see basketball as a job. I'm very blessed, very grateful to be doing what I'm doing. I love the fact that I get to wake up and play basketball and definitely will not take it for granted. And for me, it's, it's still a hobby. I still enjoy it. Like, I, I love every part of it, and I wouldn't change it for the world. I really like everybody on the team. There's all there's there's something for every about everybody that I uh, that I admire or that I uh, appreciate. You know, there's I, I enjoy animals, but no one's going to compare to Brandon with that. Um, you know, VC he's he's pretty funny. George he's got that that quirkiness to him, and I, I definitely appreciate them or um, have certain admirations of of the little things that they do. 
Uh, celebration after the game, no matter what, win or loss, I always uh, take my little man for a, a milkshake at McDonald's, just because one, it's right here, two, uh, it's extra calories for little man, and I, I just like spending time with him. Always get my uh, a Coca-Cola to celebrate, so. We, I like to interact with some of the fans after the game, just to get their thoughts after we get, like, you know, appreciate them, applaud them for, uh, for, their, for their effort in helping us out. Also, uh, depends if we've got the rest of the weekend off, I'd probably go back home, spend a bit of time with my uh, mum and dad, see my niece, my nephew, my brothers, see how everyone's getting on, a few friends. Uh, if not, if we do have another double header, I just literally go home, make some food and just sleep. Or just chill, or just relax with the housemates for a bit. I'm not much of a going out person, it's too expensive for me.